His loving kindness is for us right now. You know what? His loving kindness, another word for his loving kindness, it's, a, it's like his loving kindness, it's like a, a longer word, mercy. Yeah, it's new every morning. It's fresh every morning. I don't care what happened to you yesterday. I don't care what happened to you last night. I don't care what happened to you on the way to church this morning. The idea behind the the fresh, the, um, the mercies are new every morning it means they're fresh whenever you come to the Lord. So let's celebrate that this morning.
really like the way they did that song there, the lyrics, because um, the, the scriptures that it's based upon is from the Old Testament. But then they go and they bring it to the New Testament, they bring it to the New Covenant. They start singing it to not just to God, God, the Holy Spirit, those are the invisible parts of the Trinity, but then we have the physical representation of the invisible. And who is that? That's Jesus. So we bring it back to Jesus. That's why we're a people who are what you might call Christocentric, or you can just call it we're Jesus people. <laughs> the Father, the Spirit, all of that is Jesus is the filter. He's the physical filter of the invisible. And so that's why we give him priority in how we understand God the Father. That's how we understand his love, his peace. We look to we look to Jesus. We look to Jesus. He is who we go to. We're going to talk a little bit about misrepresentation. There are people, sometimes we do it too. We misrepresent God in different ways. And so there's many people, many cults, many sex of people or um, other organizations and they have a misrepresentation of Jesus because their focus is, was on a man maybe he called himself a prophet right you know there's people like that even this modern day how many remember Jim Jones you remember him Jim Jones he got a whole group of people from San Francisco area and took them over to South America and he wanted everybody to just listen to him. He had the interpretation. He, he wanted to make Jesus known but his own way. Misrepresentation. There's a lot of that in this world. So much so. That's why Jesus says come to me. Don't go to don't come to Anthony. Don't come to Alice. Come to Priscilla or JR or any of us up here. No, you know what we're going to do? We're going to tell you you can go to Jesus directly and you're going to get the love, the peace. You're going to get the pure water that comes from Him. So let's go before the Lord just right now. And we're, we're having a good time here. It's good to come together. But the reason why it's good is because we're here to, to spend time. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
anticipation of the good things he wants to give us. Let's get out of our seats for a few moments and let's share God's love, God's joy with those around us.
just so you know, it's not going to continue to be, you're not going to have to go endure another service where you just hear Anthony the whole time, okay? And next week, Ross will be back. He's been on vacation for two weeks, and then one weekend, he went out of town, so uh, he'll be back next week, so you guys are all happy. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. No, no it's, it's going to be awesome to have him back. It's going to be awesome because it will free me up to work on some technical things. We've had some technical issues. and I'm, You know, sometimes um, you're pretty good with things, but then you hit a wall where like, I can't go any further. Yeah. Or, so, or you can try to figure out, but it's going to take you a long time. And, like, I'm not there. So i got to get some, um, some persons over here to focus on some of the technical things that we need to do. Well, I can give you a little example of how that has um, um, helped me in the past month. Um, we want to get ourselves ready financially for a lot of things in the future. And so uh, we have, um, I'm not an accountant, I'm not a CPA, you know, and so we have a bookkeeper, um, we have a person who pays the bills, but we certainly need to have to have, uh, you know, some of these reports, different financial reports and stuff put together. And so I've spent a lot of time doing what I know how to do, uh, making expense reports. One of the things I hate doing, I know how to do it, but I hate doing it. Because it's like you gotta go for every expense on your, either the card or the bank, and then you gotta give a reason for it all. So I did that from, from July, all the way back to when we started. Oh. <laughs> I mean, there was stuff already done, but I had to put it in a certain uh, file, you know, a certain document. And so, man, I did it all. And I was, I was dying. I'm, like, I'm, I'm not that kind of person. I know some of the, there's some people that are really good at 10 key, you know, the
lure is awesome. It does this and that. What? It's a top water, you know? It's top water. But, um, so sometimes we have to delegate, and so um, I don't know why I was saying that. What was, what was the reason why I was saying that? set up where um, we're taking steps that God is leading us to fulfill a certain vision that we have. And there's a certain vision. God has given us a vision. You know, there's a, we're a little old, we're a little tiny, you know, little tiny church, little scrawny church for right now, huh? but it's going to grow because God has given us a vision and he's setting us up step by step. You know, and um, we laid out a little bit of, uh, I'll just share just a few, couple of things with you on this. One of the things is um, we know we're going to have, we shared this before, we're going to have a rehab center. Well, we're going to help people get off drugs or whatever kinds of other things they're going through. Have a place where they can um, receive the peace of God. I like to call them healing, healing houses, like a healing house. Because people need to be healed from so many other things. There's a reason why people self-medicate for different things. And a lot of times, if you just deal with uh, the symptom, you're not going to the root. You know, I, I, I like to call it your mowing weeds. Is that a good way to get rid of weeds? Just mow them? No, because next week they're going to come be, be there. No, this goes to the root. And so a healing home is like we're, we're a place where we can get healed from those things, the root that are rooted in our lives hurts and hang-ups, misrepresentation, things that have been misrepresented to us, and we just, for some odd reason, we adopted that image of God or family or whatever, and it's just, we just can't get rid of it. God can heal our mind. God can heal our thoughts. God can heal the wounds that keeps us embraced and, and stuck to it, and he can set us free from that, so we'll have a healing though. That's one of the things we want to have. Another thing we want to do is because we're, um, you know, we want to focus on the dark places in our community. So we're going to need a, 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 a large group of people that will be um, that will be able to come together so we can be a blessing to our congregation and also to our community. We've, we've, we've had hints of it, tastes of it, but we want to have it more. So one of the things is we want to be able to bless people's homes where people live and help them with their housing, with the, with wherever they live. We want to be able to, if they need a carpenter, oh yeah, we have carpenters. We have a team of carpenters and we can help you out. Mm. You need some electrician work mm. done. Oh yeah, yeah, we need, because here's the thing. We're in this boat too, the, the middle class, we're in the middle class and um, you know, we pay a ton of money for electricity. Mm. And other people, if you're under a lower a tax bracket or a lower income, you, you know, you fall on a different tier. You don't have to pay that much. But those of us who are, they're crazy. <laughs> and we're like, anybody that's just right there, you're still struggling financially. And so, you know, so we would focus on the lower middle class who don't get a lot of, um, they don't get, they don't allow, they're not qualified for a lot of things that are out there. And so we would fill that gap with our congregation and with the community around our churches. So every place where church, where Open Gate is planted, we will be a blessing to those homes around there. So when you, so if you go like, well, you know, I went, you, this is the hood, but why is this part of the hood nice? Oh, because we're, you know, we, we live, we're right next to the church, and the people there, they love God, and they've been blessed, and so they share the blessings that God has given to them with us. Well, look, you go to the church? Uh, that's not a prerequisite. We don't have to go to the church. Where they're just everywhere, everywhere they are at, the blessings spill over to whoever's around them. Amen. And so that's the idea. So that's one of the things we want to do. Well, that's going to take some organization. That's going to take some people to be leading it. That's going to take some uh, donations and different things that people will provide for that kind of stuff to happen. Um, the other thing that we want to do is we want to have a trade school of some sort because some people um, get caught up. In, um, in school and they drop out or they graduate and then it's like college is just not their thing 
you know, they, they graduate from high school, they're just happy to be away from, you know, school. And especially nowadays, you know, you get you, just, you get a degree, it doesn't guarantee you're going to get a good get a good job. So what do we want to do? We want to fill in the gap. We want to provide trade schools that are affordable, that are a blessing. And we have some people, we have some retired tradesmen who will be a part of that. That's going to take some organization. That's going to take some financial help. And we'll get the high schoolers. We'll recruit them. There's already um, grants and stuff that are ready. We'll make tiny homes, make some little homes for the homeless people that we work with. And we'll recruit them. And, you know, it'll, it'll be like the, we'll be employing these high schoolers. They'll be putting together, learning a trade, putting together these house, little tiny houses. And we'll put, make a little, find a little plot of land and we'll put them on. We'll have a little village. And then everybody will be hanging out there. We'll have our healing home there. We will have um, uh, CR, silver recovery there. We'll have all those things that help support people to get off. Not only will they be out of, get, you know, get out of the river or whatever, being homeless, but they will also be working on the skills so they can stay out of the river, stay from being homeless. So those are just some of the things that we want to do as a church. There's some bigger things too. I will share with you guys later on, maybe in the weeks to come. But God has given us a vision. God has given us prayers. Prayer requests because he's a big God. And these visions are big. And our God is big. He's great. And just because we're a little church in a tough part of Oildale, a tough part of our community, doesn't mean that we should dream in that same way or have a vision of saying God has given us perspective of his glory, of his blessing of his majesty and you know what I see it and I'm like I have no idea how to do it but God will show us who to partner with who, who knows how to do it who will help us and I'm just excited to be learning I love to learn don't you love to learn God has given us a mind and it's a beautiful thing that we can engage and learn new things you know I've shown this before but one of the uh, you know we play different games and stuff and so maybe a few years ago when we started the church I said, Lord, I want, I, want to resharp, uh, I want you to resharpen my mind. How can I be engaged and, and, and not be uh, comfortable in, you know, where I'm at? Because I've learned a lot of things. I've done a lot of things around the world. And so you can say, okay, I'm done. No, no, no. We always have to have a fresh challenge. And so I took up the game, Sudoku. <laughs> Sudoku? I was like, what are you, jujitsu? Are you, what are you? No, 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 no. It's just a number game. And so I've mastered it already. I know how to do it after, you know, about three years of doing it. And so I can do it. And I just do it. Now I got to move on to the next thing. The next thing God wants us to learn. God has given us a mind that is beautiful. Keep it engaged. Keep it sharp. All right. So we have some announcements. Uh, who's going to do the announcement? Tomas? Thomas? The leaving Thomas is in the house. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This week's announcements are starting on Monday. We have Celebrate Recovery. The internet at 5.30. At 6 o'clock, we have worship and lesson and sometimes uh, testimonies. And from 7 to 8 o'clock, uh, they break up in groups, uh, women in this room and the men in fellowship hall, where they discuss and share the thoughts on what was the lesson was on and again in more testimonies. On Tuesdays, we have Bible studies at the Palms. Every Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning, study through the book of John. James 1.27, the worship that God wants is this, caring for orphans or win, widows who need help and keep yourself free from the world's evil influence. This is the kind of worship that God accepts as pure and good. On Wednesday, Thursdays, we have, no, Tuesdays, I'm sorry. Tuesday we have our prayer meeting. Every Tuesday night we get together here and pray for one another on things that we're up. We have hangouts as well, as well as uh, praying for the surroundings, you know, praying for our kids, praying for anybody that, you know, is in need. It's been great. Um, we, you know, we're blessed to join them. Last weekend it was very new. You felt God's presence in you know, the This is something, you know what I mean? So if you have the time, 6 o'clock every Tuesday night. And uh, the scripture for that one is Isaiah 56, 7. It says, I will bring them to my holy mountain of Jerusalem and will fill them with joy in my house of prayer. 
I will accept her burnt offerings and sacrifices because my temple will be called the house of prayer for all nations. We also have uh, our open day Kern County, Min Kern County Ministries where we go out to the river and look down. Every Thursday morning at 8 o'clock behind the home wall, uh, home run wall behind the Salmon Ballpark on North Chester. They get together and go out and do some more ministry, going out to the river and giving aid to those that are in need, um, giving prayer to those that are in need as well. We also have um, our youth group getting together in September, nothing for this one to put but in September 27th, we're going to get together here and we're going to go out to do an outside. <coughs> If you have any grandchildren, neighbors, or any friends that are in, you know, age group, bring them in and we'll be happy to, you know, minister to them and bring them closer to God. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Thank you, Thomas. Well, one of the things we want to make sure we have in the focal point of our perspective um, is Jesus. Um, one of the songs that we sing it's called Jesus Only. And let me just sing a couple of um, lyrics of that song. And uh, this will help us uh, understand a little bit of what we are all about. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Let me see here. I 
sing that every once in a while because it reminds me of what my focus should be. In the midst of me typing all kinds of stuff, doing all this paperwork, sometimes I say, I gotta get this done. It's all about what I'm typing. It's all about this whole paperwork because it's all about uh, financing or whatever. No, it's all about Jesus, Anthony. When we're out at the river, oh, I gotta get my, we gotta get supplies ready. We gotta reach out to these people. Come on, everybody, let's get together. This is what we're all about. We gotta get all, all as many donations as possible so we can give and have an impact on these people. No, it's all about Jesus. Are we giving Jesus? Do I have the strength of Jesus in me? Am I speaking about Jesus to the folks as we're giving these things out? When, when people get their lives changed and the glory goes to Jesus, Oh, by the grace of God, we will do this. Oh, thank you that we are able to bless you. It's only by the grace that we are here. By Jesus, the grace of God, that we're here. Glory to him. You want to you wanna be set free? You need help? Don't come to us. We're here. But let me just tell you, you can get more from Jesus. You're, you know, the message that we bring is not about Open Gate Church. You know, when you come to Open Gate Church and, wow, you can get this, you can be uplifted, you can, oh, no, 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 no. When you come to Open Gate Church, you will find Jesus. Jesus is here. The presence of Jesus is here. Well, why am I saying this? Do you know why I'm saying this? Because there's a lot of misrepresentation out there. A lot of misrepresentation of people, churches, religious groups who are acting like they're representing Jesus they're only representing themselves or they're only representing a pet scripture, a pet doctrine. We are here and we're not even representing a character. Bud's buddy, you know, he's a character. Oh, you know, some of us, you know, we love Disney, you know, and they're all about Mickey Mouse. You know, they, can, they have everything about Mickey Mouse and you see them, you're like, wow, they, 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 these people, they know about Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse isn't real. <laughs> you see? But people also have that idea with church and God in the same way. They don't know. We're here. We're not talking about a character. We're not talking about um, a personality. We're talking about a person. A person. And he is not dead. He's alive. That's what, that's what people can't get. That's one of the hardest things for people. Jesus is alive. My goodness. He died. He resurrected. He ascended to the Father, and he is still alive. And then, he, you know, Scripture says he's doing, he's making intercession for me. He's praying for me. He's praying for you. He's alive. He loves you. He's on your, he's on your side. He's not condemning you. He's not saying, do something bad so I can hit you with a bat. No, no, he's like, you messed up again, don't worry, I'm here to be the lifter of your head. I'm here to offer you my blood that will wash you and cleanse you of all your sin. I'm here to offer you a robe of righteousness that if you give me your rags of your filthy uh, of righteousness, go ahead and give it to me and I will clothe you with my robe of righteousness and you will be able to stand in the mirror of the word and you will be able to swirl around and look at me. I am clothed by my master. I'm clothed by the savior of my soul. The one who loves me, the one who's merciful and gracious, the one who is the lifter of my head. He's not, um, he's not waiting to push me down under the water. No, no, no. He's going to extend his hand and he's going to lift us. If we come to him, he's not going to cast us down. He's not going to say, I don't have time for you. He says, I've been waiting for you. Thank you for making time for me. I can't wait to hang out with you. He's alive right now. And every time we get together, we get to come and spend time with Jesus. We had prayer meeting. Um, this past Tuesday. And what is prayer? It's simply talking to God. Talking to God. Some people say, oh, but I don't know how to pray. Yeah, you do. You talk all the time on the phone. You know how to text. Right? You know how to Twitter, whatever. You know how to talk to God. Talk, just talking to God. If, are you mad? Okay, you're mad. Tell God why you're mad. Tell him. Prayer is open communication to God. And he has made us a praying people. A communication. Because he's alive. He can't wait to spend time with us. 
And so maybe, maybe here's a good uh, here's a good thing that we can work on. I don't like to pray. Anybody out there don't like to pray? I'm gonna raise my hand first. I don't like to pray. It goes against my whole flesh, my ego. It's like, no, Anthony, you can figure it out. You're smart enough. You know, you know a little bit about computers. You know a little bit about, uh, you know, music. You know a little bit about this, that, and the other. So you can figure it out. Like, yeah, but no, I need to go to Jesus. I'm not going to use my past experiences to try to figure things out. I could. You know, I've, uh, I could say, okay, this is how it worked last time. This is how it's going to work this time. I don't need to pray. I just need to, my experience should dictate what I need to do. Not the way it is, huh? That happens a lot. <laughs> it happens. My goodness. We've been talking in the book of John. And uh, John, his whole focus has been to present Jesus, an accurate picture, an accurate description of Jesus, because the people had an inaccurate, even himself at times, had a distorted perspective of Jesus. And so, John chapter 20, verse 31, talks about why John wrote the book of John, the Gospel of John. If you want to put that scripture, uh, John chapter 20, verse 31. And this is, we get, a, we get some insight on why did John write the book of John? What was his motive? What was his reason? Well, it Let's read it together. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, Jesus, talking about the person of Jesus, that he's the promised one that the Old Testament had prophesied about. This is really important for the Jewish people. They needed to realize, oh, hey, this is the one. Okay? And that he's the son of God. That's for all of us. That's for all of us. He's the son of God. He's an extension, a representation of what wasn't once invisible. God is invisible. The Holy Spirit is invisible. There are symbols of them, but they are invisible. Jesus is the physical representation of God. So that's why we give him priority. That's why we sing the song, Jesus Only. If we want to know what God the Father is like, we look at Jesus. If we want to know what the Holy Spirit is, God, the Holy Spirit is like, we look at Jesus, the man who was filled with the Holy Spirit. Nobody was more filled with the Holy Spirit than Jesus. This is good because it helps filter out a lot of misrepresentation. A lot of misrepresentation. You know, um, when you, when you, so I, we talked about this maybe a few months ago, but when you go find a diamond, a precious jewel, and uh, the jeweler presents it to you. How does he present it to you? How does she present it to you? Black. Huh? On black velvet. On black velvet because there's nothing blacker, nothing darker that doesn't provide the contrast needed to appreciate the beauty of that rock. And so John gets into this on John chapter 7. Let's go to John chapter 7, um, Abby. And uh, John chapter 7, as we've been studying, John chapter 7, we're going to go to verse, uh, just go to verse 1 for now. We talked a little bit last week about how John chapter um, 7, the first part of the scriptures there, the first paragraphs, um, that there was a festival that was happening. Do you remember what the festival was? Feast of Tabernacles. Huh? Feast of Tabernacles. Feast of Tabernacles, that's right. The Feast of Tabernacles is a practice that Jewish people practice to this day. 
you can go into the Jewish community and around this time, the Feast of Tabernacles, it's called, uh, they call it in Hebrew, Sukkot. S-U-K-K-O-T. Sukkot. And you can go to their house, and you might see it in the front yard or the backyard, they'll, they'll have like a little uh, uh, booth. They'll have a, like a little uh, porch type structure. And uh, during those seven days, they go to that, in that structure, and they eat there, they read scriptures there. It's like a place where uh, reminding them of the, their Jewish ancestors who lived in the wilderness for 40 years. And they lived in tents. So it reminds them that my people, we lived in tents during this time. And it was um, instated in the Old Testament that they should do this as part of their culture. So they still do it to this day. So this is the time that this is taking place. If you want to sort of give some structure to this, we're asking, answering the question, when? When did this all take place? And uh, when did this discussion take place? He has a discussion with his brothers. His brothers want him to, just to paraphrase or summarize, somebody remember? What do his brothers want him to do? They want him to go to the feast with them so that way he can proclaim that he's the Messiah. So he can proclaim he's the Son of God. He can do all kinds of miracles. And they tell him, anybody who wants to be popular, that's what they should be doing. And they had it all wrong. They had a misinterpretation. They had a wrong perspective of Jesus. They didn't, they were his brothers. And they thought, oh, he's out at it for his glory. He wants to bring attention to himself. And he's like, I don't want to do that. You, I have a timing that I'm going by. I have a sequence that I'm, I'm going by. Gee, my father tells me the sequence, and I just go by what my father wants. Isn't that neat? Jesus is the Son of God. He's the King. He's the Lord. And yet he is submitted. He's submitted. He's not doing his own thing. He's submitted. Wow, that, that's a challenge for me. I have to make sure that I'm submitted to leaders, to the, to the Lord, to his word, to his spirit. And i got to be guided to the sequence. It's not just doing it is the key, but also how I do it. If it's according to how he's laid out. This is a good question on, you know, what's going on here that answers the question on, why didn't Jesus want to go to Jerusalem? Two reasons. To during the during the feast, he didn't want to go because he didn't want to say, "I'm going because you are telling me, my brothers." Then I'd be listening to you. That's one thing. He wanted to be a man pleaser. He would want to be his fa a father. He wanted to please his father. There's a sequence. And then number two is he knew that the religious people, the religious leaders, were setting a trap. And they wanted to kill him. So it's right there. He did not want to go about in Judea because the Jewish leaders were there were looking for a way to kill him. He knows it. They're going to set up a trap. Okay. So, fast forward a little bit. Fast forward a little bit. Does Jesus not go to the festival? What's that? He goes eventually. He, eventually, he does go. Halfway through. Yeah, he does go. He eventually does go, but was, was he lying? I don't want to go because it wasn't that he did, he wasn't going to go. He wasn't lying. That it was how they wanted him to go. Remember, any any of the festivals, all the villages around there, where is Jerusalem? It's on the city on a hill. And everybody comes on the road and they sing songs as they get closer and closer. To Jerusalem, and so it's like a parade of, of, of villagers coming, and it's, it's awesome. They're singing songs, the songs of ascent, the songs that like every place in the ground you can tell this. This is a, sing this song, and they're singing the song, and then they come to another place, sing this song. So there's a sequence of psalms. It's called the song of ascent, and you get higher and higher and higher, and you sing these songs, and it sort of builds up the joy and the the focus and the 
and, and, and the emphasis. And it just grows and grows and grows. And then they finally make it to Jerusalem. And Jesus said, I'm not, I'm not going to go that way. I know, it's, I know it's coming my way. I know there's something there. They want to kill me, and I'm not going to go. He, he also says in the, this portion, um, because his brothers didn't believe, he, he states to them in verse um, 6, he says, go to verse 6 there, Abby. He says, he's talking to his brothers. Jesus therefore said to them, my time is not yet here. Yeah, there you go. Therefore, Jesus said, my time is not yet here for you. Any time will do. Are you like that? Any time? As soon as possible. Is time? Are you so focused on time? Do you like certain things done at a certain time? And are you submitted to the way God's timing is? Let me ask. How is God's timing? Most of the time. Can I ask you a question? How, how, is, God, how is God timing compared to our timing? Forever. Huh? Forever. Huh? It takes forever. Because <laughs> like, Jesus, when are you going to do it, Lord? How long will it be, Lord? I'm waiting. <laughs> it's like, I don't have the patience of Job. That's sort of the idea coming across. And this is the challenge for us. But Jesus is modeling that there is a timing, humanly speaking, that is not according to God's timing. With you, any time is okay. He's trying to contrast. The black velvet is there. Are you the black velvet sometimes? <laughs> when it comes to time, the gem of time, are you, like, are, you, are you the, the diamond? We're like, oh yeah, it has to happen. I need this, that, and the other. But it's okay. I'm going to wait on the Lord. I love to wait on Jesus. I just love to hang out and worry about how this and that and the other is going to get done. I love it. I like it so much. Come on, everybody. Come to my house. We're going to have a waiting party. <laughs> what are we going to do there? We're just going to sit down. It's my party, and I'll wait if I want to. <laughs> There's a timing, and you cannot enjoy that timing if you're not submitted, surrender to the Lord. Jesus is saying, "Hey, I'm the I'm the King of the universe. I can, with a snap of my finger, I can do whatever. But I'm not on my own time. I'm submitted to my Father." Why is that important to understand? What, remember John is telling us, if you believe in the Son of God, if you believe in the Messiah, if you trust in Him and how He does things and model your life, you will receive what? John chapter 20, verse 30. Life. Eternal life. See, John is wanting to get us there. Some of us were like, I don't have eternal life. I don't have abundant life. Well, because you're, you're missing out. You, you have a skewed version of Jesus. You, you, you're missing out. What John is doing is he's dismantling the religious picture and structure and statue of, of God. And he's letting Jesus shine. Okay. So let's keep on going. It says in verse 10, However, after his brothers had left for the festival, he went also, not publicly, but in secret. My goodness. What a display of humility. The king of the universe, the one who has it all together, he's not saying, everybody look at me. Everybody, I am amazing. I am awesome. Look at, look at how, look at the way I heal people. Look at the way I, you know, you need to give to my ministry. You give to my ministry. And you know what? You're going to come away with some blessings. You're going to, you know what? You give to me, and you know what? A seed of faith in me, then you know it's going to come back to you, and you're going to have an awesome harvest. <laughs> he's not doing that. He's going in a secret way because he's humble. You see? 
the Savior, the King, the picture of Jesus, he's humble, he's selfless. Oh, he wants to be known, but do you know him that way? Do you know him that way? Verse 11 says, Now at the festival, the Jewish leaders were watching for Jesus and asking, Where is he? Another indicator, another proof that he went secretly. He didn't go, you know, with pomp and glory and all this excitement. No, they were still looking for him. Among the crowds, in verse 12, the, there was widespread whispering about him. And some said, He is a good man. We got two camps that are being laid out here. A, a group of people are saying he's good. Another group are saying, no, he deceived the people. In verse uh, 12, the end of verse 12, others replied, no, he deceives the people. They see him as a deceiver. They have a mis they have a misguided understanding of him. Who do you think they were um, influenced by to think that? Who was influencing them that says that? Um, that uh, push them towards that idea that no, he deceives the people. Who? The religious leaders. The, the Jewish leaders. They had a misrepresentation on the one hand, and then the other hand is, well, if he is who he really says he is, then that means our authority and our power will dwindle. Ooh, yeah. How dare somebody come and chisel at the base of our authority? We are the ones who have authority. You see the difference there? They had authority because they positionally, they had a position and they were an authority. That's a black cloth. Jesus had authority because he was submitted to the one who had all authority. The diamond. That's Jesus. Lord, help me to be submitted. Help me to be submitted to even other people, leaders, who I need to be submitted to. Let me be submitted to his plan. Let me be submitted to his word. Isn't that crazy? You get, so it's real careful. we got to be very careful that we are not let, letting anybody who's been misrepresenting Jesus come into our lives and give him authority. You know, there are some, um, there's a, uh, let me just drop a name here. It's, just, it's okay, it's been on uh, it's been public, publicized on YouTube, but um, Creflo Dollar. Creflo Dollar was a, um, a prosperity preacher, you know, and um, he talked about you give to God. If you give to my church, you know what? You will get a harvest. You will you get money. You will. Um, it's basically prosperity preaching, you know. It's like you name it and claim it, blab it and grab it, confess it and possess it. Uh, speak it into his existence and all this. I want to, you know, when I speak into his existence, I'm going to get a Learjet in the name of Jesus, and all you are going to help me get it. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to sow it in the seed, and then whatever you're speaking into existence will come to fruition because you're helping me speak this into existence and and, and, and gather it. We're all going to just proclaim. We're going to, and so guess what he did? He did this for years and years and years. He came on TV. He came in a show and he confessed I was wrong. He said, all those years, I was preaching wrong. And he says, if you bought my books on giving, if you bought my books on finances, if you bought my videos, my series, throw it away. Praise the Lord for the humility that he had the guts to do that, huh? But all those years, people like you and me were following him. Why? Why were those people following him? Because they didn't have an accurate picture and perspective of Jesus. You want to know why? You know why? This happens to us too. They'd rather hear someone describe Jesus to them, talk about Jesus depicted Jesus and that was good enough for us they didn't want to go to the source you can go to the word of God yourself and you can find out exactly how Jesus is you can find out exactly how the gospel really is so we bear and those people bear or and anybody who still 
gets consumed in some of these false doctrines, we bear some responsibility. <laughs> we do. You know, there's this a gal. Um, well, there's uh, this friend. Years and years and years and years, years ago, um, she was angry at a, uh, a church. She was angry at a pastor um, because she hadn't been taught about giving in a godly way. You know, we're blessed to be a blessing. That's the original Abrahamic covenant. That I will bless you and all the nations will be blessed through you. So, in a sense, when God does bless us, we are uh, to exemplify benevolence, the blessings to others. We, we do. We're supposed to share that. We're not supposed to. We God just puts the want to in us to want to do that, to be a blessing to others. And we're not trying to bring attention to ourselves. We're not trying to say, you know, uh, make ourselves millionaires or billionaires. God's blessing just comes when we follow his heart that he puts inside of us. Well, she went to a church and they didn't teach about giving or tithing or offerings or none of that. So the, the, the family never gave and they were a well-to-do family. And then she goes to the mission field and she starts studying the word of God and then God starts working on her heart. And then she's like, oh, I need to give. We need to give. We've been blessed. How come we haven't been giving all these years? We've been going to the church. You know what? How dare that church? How dare that pastor? He didn't even tell us about the, the, the ministry of giving and how much of a blessing it can be. You know, it's better to give than to receive. Mm. I, I didn't even know that. Man, we were taught wrong. I said, sister, it's not his fault. You had the word of God the whole time. Why did you let him lead you down that path? We're supposed to have discernment. We have the word of God that guides us and directs us. You bear responsibility. So forgive him. Forgive yourself. Don't get caught up. Move forward in what God has shown you. <sighs> well, that was received well. <laughs> it wasn't. You know, it wasn't. People still want to hold other people accountable for their own stuff. Why? Because we give all this weight to other people. To give us guidance, just like the people of God, the Israel, um, the Jewish people, were giving it to their Jewish leaders, giving authority to them. The, okay, you're ruled, you're ruling in a strong way, in a harsh way, then rule over us. There's a lot of churches like that right now. You know that? Mm -hmm. Legalistic as can be, making you know condemnation, playing Holy Spirit, and like you know, you know, the, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be acting this way. How come? Because I'm telling you and I'm from God and the Spirit of God is telling me. You just, just brothers and sisters, when we have to bring correction, when we want to bring clarity, we just take him to the Word of God and let God do the work. Take him to Jesus. Come on. Take him to Jesus. You know, you know we're going to go on the next chapter. Um, in, in chapter 8, um, after he was fighting with the, the Jewish leaders during the, uh, the festival, the last day of the festival, after that, he goes to a certain place, and these Jewish leaders who are challenging him, you know what they do? They bring to him a woman caught in adultery. They bring a woman caught in adultery. And they think, oh, we got him. We're going we're gonna to expose this grace thing that he's trying to give or whatever, this authority he's trying to wield, we got him. So, scripture, you know, we know the story, we're going to go through this, but I just want to highlight that leaders who are in the wrong, who are on the wrong paradigm of authority, they need to wield it by control. That's one of the ways that they glorify themselves in controlling people. Control. And so they get this woman. They don't bring the guy. They bring the woman. Where's the guy who was caught in adultery? She's caught in adultery by herself? No. What? No, it's two. It takes two to tangle.
slaves too. Well, they bring the woman because that's a religious uh, authority type control does. Exploits the weak. Exploits the ignorant. Exploits the poor. My goodness. Exploits those who um, don't want to don't want to um, go to the source to find out if what they're saying is true. They exploit. They love to keep people in the dark. You know, and so they bring this woman. And they're all, all there waiting for him to condemn them as they come to Jesus. They, they did one good thing. They brought her to Jesus. Even the stupidity of religious people can do one thing good, just like a clock is right twice a, twice a day. They did one thing good. They brought him, brought her to Jesus for the wrong reasons, the wrong purpose. But God always can fix anybody's bad intentions. And so he kneels down. He's riding in the ground. And one by one, he says, first, he who is without sin, cast the first stone. We know this. And one by one, they start taking off. And then he looks up and they're all gone. They're all gone. He didn't even have to wield his defense. He just asked a question. <laughs> he asked a question. He doesn't make a statement. Like what religious people do. You gotta do this. You gotta do that. You better not be doing this. Why? Because I tell you, I'm the authority here. <laughs> Hello, mom. Hello, dad. <laughs> we have to inspire the joy and to submit. And so, he just simply asked a question. He who is without sin cast the first stone. I'll leave. The woman is there all by herself, the exploited one. She, she was probably embarrassed. She was probably full of feeling shame. She, she was caught in, you know, in this horrible place. And Jesus is waiting. Anybody who's been caught. He's waiting. I don't care how you got here. I don't care if it was to some idiot that brought you here. You're here. And let me just ask you, where are your condemners? They are gone. Neither will I. You get the picture. Neither will I condemn you. He will never condemn you. He will never push us away. He will never kick us to the curb. Never in the million years. People will. Sometimes there are people in my life, I have, I've cut them out just because I don't want them to be, part, you know, having a certain influence in a, on, on me. Jesus is not like that. He's more powerful than that. He can overcome that. He can overwhelm that. Woo, is that awesome? He's not limited like we are. He's not going to condemn us. I don't know how you've come to Jesus, but we sing the song, Jesus, we love you, because... That is what our goal is, to inspire you to love Jesus. How gracious he is, how merciful he is. You know what? Don't take my word for it, though. Go to the source. Go to the fountain. Man, I'm going to end it right here. This is what he says to the people during the festival. During the festival. Verse 37. You can find that verse 37, Abby. There you go. On the last and greatest day of the festival, it was seven days. This is the, the eighth day when they were all bringing it to a close. He comes and he tells them, on the last day, the greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me. 
Don't come to my leaders. Don't come to my prophet. Don't come to my apostle. Don't come to my this church. Don't come to that church. Don't come to this pastor. Don't come to this leader. Don't come to this teacher. Don't come to this person. Don't come to the... No, 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 no. What does he say? Come to me and drink. And that's what we're all about. Go to Jesus. Don't come to me. I, oh, I will be here for you. I will be here, but I guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, okay, Tracy, you got some things going on? Come on, my brother, reach out your hand there. We're going to come to Jesus together. Lord, in the name of Jesus, help my brother. And now, Tracy, I want you to talk to Jesus. You can go straight to him, and I will, help. I will be here to help you and to strengthen you. That's the way. And yet, God is going to give him a breakthrough. I know it. God is going to do amazing things. And guess who's going to get the glory? You deserve the glory and the honor. It's all about Jesus. Jesus only is our message. Bow your heads with me. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For helping us to understand you. We can go directly to you. Thank you, Lord, that as we look through glass, looking at the picture of you, looking at you through this glass, for some of us, Lord, it's got a lot of mud on it. There's a lot of distortion in there. But you are clearing it up. And you're going to clear it up even more. Oh God, thank you for doing that. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to see you clearer. To know you.
made a spectacle over them. You know what that means? When he slammed into the ground, he danced around and says, everybody, look what I did. I did all this for you. Let me guide you. I will give you victory after victory. I made a spectacle of all your enemies, my enemies. Look what I did. You have to have the right perspective, though. Now God is going to give it to you. Go on the victory God has given you. Oh, dance around the enemies who come before you. Dance around it because Jesus has made a spectacle. Look what I did through the cross and submission and my timing. Look what I did. And you can, you can enjoy the same victory. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Oh, yeah. But we have uh, one announcement. If we can get to some guys and any strong ladies, we got a couple of tables that we want to move over here for celebrate recovery tomorrow night. So you guys can assist with that. That would be awesome.